Hey guys, so we're going to be talking about Imagine It Clarity and the Navis Work t task with, within it. So, a bit about that. Uh, here's the task itself. So, in here we can specify the name of the task, target files, post action, frequency, and so on throughout the rest of this setup. And so what we'll take a look at is actually getting into Clarity and doing this, and I'll update and run it. To kind of show you what the output of this is, so it'll create the NWCs. Uh, in the within the company that I work for, our standard is to have project number dash Navis underscore whatever the discipline is, and we're pulling that from the Revit models. So we have predetermined views that are set up that way. So essentially, within our Revit template, we'll have maybe a view template set up. We'll have the view, so we'll have Navis underscore electrical. We'll have a view template set up for called Navis underscore electrical that turns off all the other stuff like fire protection, HVAC, mech piping, plumbing, um, so that we only see electrical. And then we'll do that for every single one of those that live within the MEP system or MEP model. And then what Nav or what this clarity task does is it searches for Navis. So regardless on what discipline it is, it searches for Navis and then dumps out the updated NWCs, either by on demand or scheduled. And I think we can also set it up to be automatic. So every time somebody syncs, we would then export out NWCs. Uh, you can expect that one to take up a lot of, comp you know, um, effort or, or time on, on the computers that you're using. So I would use that kind of sparingly just in case uh, you don't uh, overload the computers themselves. But you can see that would be incredibly useful if you had it doing that because it would almost be in real time that you're looking at these NWC files. So to close this, we'll take a look at it in Clarity. So I'll minimize this and then we'll open up the Clarity window or browser. So, or we'll open up Google with Clarity open up in the browser. So, if we scroll up to the top, we have set up tasks. So, I've already created the task. It's here and it's called Navisworks. Now, if you wanted to add one, you would, you know, browse out to your project, go to set up task, go to add task. And then from there, you would browse through here until you find the Navisworks one, which is down here in print slash export. And that's right here click on that and then what you would do is go into actually setting up all these different settings to make sure that it works correctly so I mean right now it's default just the whole model uh, what I'll do is I'll jump back to the one that I've set up and we'll kind of talk about that so we go back there we'll go to edit and then we can kind of take a look at the settings so I have Navisworks as the name the scope of it scope of it I does this has um so i mean this is just setting up the scope to make sure um or to specify if it's going against a whole server or specific files or folders um and then down here you would actually specify the revit models so you can either set it up for all i just set it up to run the um sample architectural and sample MEP uh, Autodesk models here priority it's 1 to 10 1 is like I'm pretty sure that like uh, the highest priority if I remember so because the lower numbers having more priority so if you set to 1 and these are just nice little tips or nice information about these different things so definitely keep these in mind when you're using this tool but I generally keep this priority to five just because I don't want it bumping out something else. And, and really, NWC exports aren't like high priority to me. Um, work sets, for the most part, I just leave this as is. I'm, I'm not worried about that too much. Post action, I do come in here. I don't think the default set up this way, but I think it's set to none. But I what I do is I go in there and set move and copy files. I'll browse out to the location so you can see it's set to our internal server, projects, and then Navisworks test, Navisworks, and then NWCs, which is a folder. So I set it to move, not copy. 
and then over here to the right we have frequency right now it's on demand we can uh, put it as scheduled and then we can do it automatically when when it uh, anybody syncs to the central model I'm what I'm gonna do is update and run this I'm gonna go back to edit that task and then while we're talking about this, it'll run in the background. And real quickly, I'll show you the NWC. So here we can see that these haven't been ran since October 11th. And today is the 20th. Uh, so we'll see these date modified updates shortly. So we'll minimize that and kind of go through the rest of these. Email no, or launchable. I just leave this as no, but I would recommend changing this to yes. I think the defaults no, so that's why it's set up there. But I would imagine this has something to do with the actual uh, running that this uh, automatically, either through that Revit add-in or, or through the browser. So email notifications, um, I have it set to no. It does still send me notifications here and there so there may be some back-end setting that I need to change but um, generally I don't want it to unless it errors out enabled yes that's a default so down here is a little bit different for me so as you saw before it was set to whole model now if you drop this down you do have options and it kind of pulls from the actual Revit project but what I usually do is I have it set to view name and then contains Navis because I want only those views. Now maybe for an architectural model, you may want it set to whole model and you can come over here and kind of take a look at some of the options that you have and you can change these up. You can remove this and switch it back to the whole model or for this, for my workflow it's view name contains Navis because our MEP model does um, include multiple disciplines in it and I do want those as separate NWC's so I have it set up this way so it's a view name contains Navis and what you do is you essentially search through this list so view names here and then you do this one which is a pretty much a contains and you say add and then you're good to go and what it'll do is it'll cycle through it'll open up that Revit Michael or open up that Revit model cycle through the views until it finds the views with Navis in it and then it'll dump those out as NWC's so the NWC file name so it's set to project uh, number and then name so I'm kinda confused by this because it doesn't pull from the actual Revit name but it actually pulls from the view name so right now as default it's fine with name but if you come here and actually look at view you can see view name is one of the options so it is kind of confusing but this does work but de you know definitely check into it if you do see that whatever you've chosen doesn't work for you there's a whole bunch of other options and uh, you know a bunch of different parameters that you can pull into the name of the NWCs so definitely check those out so coordinates uh, I just leave it as default internal but you do have an option to switch them to shared if needed parameter options found the elements uh, divide files into levels for the most part I leave all this stuff as default you can kind of take a snippet of what you see here so you can, in case it's not that way, switch it to to this. Um, I know, like I export element IDs, I do need those export parts. For the most part, we don't uh, break things into parts, so that's fine. I don't want the room geometry because more or less it's just annoying to have that, and we don't necessarily use it. So I set that to, to no. Uh, find missing materials, convert element properties, export links. No, because we are pulling, you know the if the architectural model is linked into the MEP we are exporting out the architectural model anyway separately and we wouldn't want the links anyway at least not the not creating NWC's that way um, export rooms as attributes so yes export out you URLs yes and then include metadata file no um, so you know fool around with these you do have a wealth of settings here that you can mess with 
uh, see what works for you when you're setting this up. So by this time, our task should have ran, but something that's kind of um, a good to know is just you can come over here and check current task. And for the most part, it looks like everything is ran except for this architectural one. The only other one was the MEP. So uh, the good thing is, is <clears throat> that one had a whole bunch. So we'll we'll see a few modifications. Looks like this arch architectural is taking a bit. Um, we can come over here to complete the task and see that the MEP one is completed. And what we'll do is we'll go back to the folder, open up the NWC folder, and we'll ignore this architectural for now. It's running currently, but you can see here that all the MEPs have updated. So they've updated pretty quickly, uh, about four minutes ago or so. Um, and you can see that it dumps them out and it works pretty well. I'm not going to open up the NWF and you can see the architectural just updated. And I am also getting the emails that that's happening. So you can see it works pretty well. So what you know you can do is have it set up on a schedule, do it weekly, uh, or especially if you're doing like clashes around that time, or you can do the sync. I really like this sync because anytime somebody syncs to it, they get that information in real time. I think it's valuable if they are doing a kind of, so after you've done your initial clash and review and you let the team know, now when they start to review those clashes and take care of them, then every time they sync, they get the you know NWC exports and they can have that almost real time live feedback of what the clashes that they have done, you know, if it, or the clashes they, that they have picked up if they've created new ones or if they've resolved them or whatever the case is they can kind of get that information pretty quickly um and that you know again you got to kind of weigh out the negatives to that because if it is doing it if every time you sync you run out new nwcs you could definitely bog up your com your task computers so definitely keep the, that in mind but you can see also it's a really quick export so it may not bog it up too much it all depends on the scale and how many how many computers you have and how many people you have working um, and using these tasks and stuff so there's variables to keep in mind but it's there so for the most part that's how you kind of set it up so just remember if you go to set up task go to add task you have Navisworks right here and then when you create your task you can find up here and you can edit them and then you know just take a look at kind of what I have here and use it either as a, a foundation to create what you need to or just use the default settings that are already there when you create the, the task itself and then um, you should be good to go and you know at least a portion of your Navisworks Export or Navisworks clash detection workflow is automated. So uh, let me know if you have any questions or any comments. Uh, definitely reach out if you do. Um, and thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.